Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Trevor. How are we this good. morning? Very good, thank you, Roland. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Whereabouts are you? In the world today, I'm in sunny Melbourne. You're in sunny today, Melbourne. So, yes, yeah, so I've had a lovely weekend down in Gippsland, so I've had oh. hightailed it back this morning to get some decent internet. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I am sitting in one of our distributors' offices, tethering through my phone because I had issues with their wireless, so I'm hoping that I do not have too many latency issues. Well, okay. good morning, everybody, and thank you for making it on the call today. Very excited to be um, going through some Outlook tips and tricks. Now, for those of you who've been with us for the last six months, you would have seen some of these sessions on Outlook before. The, when we did the last one, we had such positive feedback, Trevor, and people like, oh, I wish I could get other members in my team to attend it. So we've decided to redo it. For those of you who have seen stuff, I'm sure there were things that you didn't pick up last time that you're going to pick up this time. And, you know, one of the best... Uh, um, stories I use or um, analogies I use around training really is uh, tell people what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you've told them. So repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, it's like if you want to hit a golf ball, you play a lot of golf, Trev. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, like you got, you got to hit that shot right 2,000 times, you know, if you want. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that my problem? Okay. Uh, I think so, I think so, you know. So you practice. don't just grab the bags out of the back of the car and hit the hit the golf course. No wonder I'm not hitting them that well. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, you, you can get the bats, hit them with golf bats. That starts even better. All right, guys, so what have we got coming up today? Outlook tips and tricks. Um, amping up your email uh, usage, really. And, Trip, uh, you know, I think we, we're going to get straight into it. So this is, um, you know, Outlook 2010, 2013, or 2016. Uh, conversation view is something that some of you have been using before. And I, I want to start talking about this because I actually got an email. I got emailed the question regarding this. And... It was regarding sent items, Trevor. People were saying to me, if I send out a, a, an email, okay, or I do reply with instant message, okay, yep. how, you know, I've got to go to sent items and start looking for it. If you've got conversation view in place, your replies or sent item emails will appear in that conversation view, even, even in your inbox. Yeah. So the first time you, if you've got conversation view, the first time you click it, it'll just show you um, the emails. Um, if, if you click it again, it'll show you the emails, including the duplicates. The first time just shows you unique emails. If you click it again, it's going to show you the emails plus your sent items. So which which really yourself, helps with yes. one practice or modern practice mail as well, Roland, because yeah. I, I, I must admit I started using it. Um, straight after the last time we had this session, and and I've I, I just see so much more. It, it helps me with the conversation. Um, I do get a little bit lost sometimes with things where I I, I, I forget to open it up, um, or it breaks the chain in the conversation. Yeah. So sometimes the the conversation chains and I, the, the chain breaks, and I need to to go digging around. I.e., someone falls out of something. So what mm -hmm. would cause that? That the the, the um, I think I think if you, if you can't see the email, what it's probably doing, Trevor, is is consolidating two emails that crossed over into a single one. Ah. So if you click that arrow, so for those of you who haven't used Conversation View before, or you're new to this, if you're thinking, what are Trevor and Roland talking about? Everybody, I want you to have Outlook open now. Within Outlook, I want you to click on the View tab. On the top left-hand corner, there will be a button saying, or a little checkbox saying, View as Conversation. Click that checkbox. It'll say, All Folders or This Folder. You, you should be in Inbox anyway, so you can just say, This Folder, okay? Or you can do it for all folders if you want. I normally just do it for my inbox. Um, and what it'll do is then consolidate all emails re with the same subject line into a single view. So, so I want you to think about it like SMS on your phone. If, if you and I are having text messages, Trevor, we're sending text messages back and forth, there's an actual flow of a conversation. Roly said this, Trevor said this, Trevor said this, Roly said this, blah, blah, blah. And it goes all the way down. There's a logical flow chronologically of what happened. So if you've got an email trail going on, 
conversation view helps you to track that email trail. You know you need this if you're the kind of person who right clicks in your inbox and says, find all from same sender, find all messages, regard, you know, find all regarding. Because mm. what that's going to do is start to do a search. And, and the search it's going to give you is essentially conversation view. So I, I've been using this for a while, and some people have said to me, yep, I don't like it, but when I show them that they can see their sent items in conversation view as well, or if you file stuff in different folders. You know, like one of the things we're going to do a bit later is automatically filing stuff in subfolders in Outlook. So if you're filing stuff in subfolders, how, how, without going and searching all those subfolders, how, how do we get it? So conversation view will say to you, all right, I've pulled this from um, sent items. I pulled this from when you replied with an instant message. So even if you use them in email and I reply, because it injects the subject line in the instant message, if I reply with an instant message, it's still going to pull that into my conversation view. So I want you to think about it as, you know, we're stuck in email jail. This is a way of consolidating your email and allowing you to, to bring everything together in what, what I would term a single pane of glass. So with one view, I can view everything related to that subject. Now, a, a caveat where I've seen things go wrong is when I use the same subject line in different emails. I've seen those actually... Uh, conjoining <laughs> emails that were sent to different parties, but I used exactly the same subject line. Yeah, yeah. So, the other thing is that yes. um, looking at that with our One Practice Mail clients yep. um, or One Practice Mail clients is that the categories don't show. So what we had um, our dev team do was to build it when a document had been saved into SharePoint using One Practice Mail. It created mm. a category saying that that was there. So. It doesn't show those, so you need to then click on the categories to be able to, if you oh, want to use that okay, feature yeah. to see um, what emails yeah, have been category, filed. Yeah, what emails, what attachments and that have been filed into into one practice, one practice it's really, yeah, so it's really taking it out of Outlook and filing it into SharePoint as a central yeah. repository or a single point mm. of truth we spoke about the other day. Yeah. So, right. So, guys, that's conversation view again. Not all things for all people. Try it. Uh, it, it. You know, it may be, it may save you a mass amount of time and just really simplify your life. Other people, I, I've got people that I worked with at Microsoft who, who didn't like it as a feature, and that's okay. It's just a feature. It's not a must-have, um, but I'm, I like it and I use it all the time and I have for many years. So it's one of those things I show people in Outlook that often changes the way they use the product. Now, another feature is the ignore, and um, I think this is uh, quite timely, seen as we are moving into um, the NRL and AFL season, and uh, I find that, <laughs> okay, so this is my graph, so I find that people send out a lot of emails regarding footy comps and who they're barracking for, that's the term you use in Melbourne, that's a Victorian term, who do you barrack for, is that right, Trevor? Yeah. Who do you barrack for then? Collingwood. Collingwood, okay. I don't know. Don't, don't, We're don't going terrible. Like, it's just I don't want to talk about it. It's all right, okay. You see, this is the kind of those stuff. Those emails don't I... go anywhere with me at the moment. It's just all right. Well, I haven't season seen is you. over. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you shouting about it. So if people in your organization are replying all to, to a particular conversation, so let's say Trevor sent out an email to everybody at Hub One, oh, I can't believe how bad Collingwood's doing this season. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and then, you know, Tristan would definitely be first to reply to, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and he would be. Uh, uh, Not only does the entire team are based in, apart, you know, uh, based up in, in Sydney and in Queensland, they, they have no interest in AFL. So I'm very lonely okay. at that level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, we don't get a lot of AFL. But the, I ignore... If, if you are not interested in that conversation and you see it, people replying or replying all and it's going around your organization, right click on the email, select to ignore. Every response to that particular email will automatically go into your deleted items folder. Now, if you, if you want to stop ignoring it, you can go to deleted items and stop ignoring it. But I was talking to a gentleman yesterday, uh, one of our customers, who said they actually implemented a policy about five years ago um, 
to remove the reply all button in Outlook. It is possible. Yeah. But <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it got so bad in the company, not massive, 150 people, but it got so bad with what I would term internal spam, they actually got the IT company in to remove the reply all button. So we, when I showed him, I said, well, you know, he said, well, we're not doing that in Office 365. And I said, all right, theoretically you could do it, but he, he's chosen, he, he had to buckle to pressure a few years ago and put the reply all button back in. <laughs> but the ignore button, to him, he, well, he says, well, that's perfect. Because, um, you know, even if people are replying all, if I see it's something that's spam, I'm, I'm just going to ignore it. Okay? So, yeah. yes. guys... It is useful. I'm I'm a big fan. I'm trying to find one of my emails that I can do it on, but um, unfortunately, I like I want to I want to be kept up to date with all the ones I'm getting. So we must have some pretty good policies in it. Have one. Find find one from David Hamilton and just ignore it. <laughs> he, he is on the call, so get ready. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get some comments to the <laughs> I have window shortly. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the ignore is quite handy. Now, Trevor, the reason why you may not be getting emails that you, you are want to ignore, and I'll bring this feature in there, which is not actually mentioned in, in those bullet points, but it's the clutter folder. Have, have you looked much at clutter, Trevor? Yes, yeah, I, I, and you get your little update every week, and it tells yes. you what it's put into clutter, and you can go and have a look. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much what I don't want to All look right. at anyway, yeah. Yep. Well, it, it's stuff that you could possibly read later. That's how I think about Clutter. What's interesting is Clutter actually uses Office Graph and, and the Dell features we're talking about over the last few weeks. It's the machine learning side of Office 365, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to train Clutter, guys. Some people are like, I don't like Clutter if, if I, I think there's an email. You, you wouldn't just, believe what's in my... My first thing in clutter is an AFL email. There you go. There so we it go. Can, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so, guys, you've got to teach clutter um, what is clutter in your inbox. It can't just – it wants to start putting stuff in there, but newsletters. Um, so I any type of things that you think, well, that's not – a priority for me to read right now. It's a nice to read. Do I want to delete it? No. I would like to read the CompTIA newsletter. I would like to read the Office 365 updates, the Azure updates. These are things I've subscribed to. I subscribe to them because I wanted to read them. All right? So what I do is over a period of about three weeks, which is normally how, I, how long I find, a couple of weeks till you get clutter working really sweetly, okay? But I want you to look, everybody look in your inbox now. I want you to see a newsletter, some type of update that you you haven't read this morning because it's a nice to read, but it's not a priority. And I want you to take that and I want you to drag that email into Clutter. And that is your first step in teaching your machine how to manage Oh, it's not spam because you've subscribed to it, but it's stuff you could read later. You think, well, you know what I'm going to do on the bus, on the way home, I'm going to go and have a look at what's in Clutter. And, you know, we talk about Yammer updates and that. I, I, I see people put Yammer updates into Clutter. I sometimes put Yammer updates into Clutter and say, um, if I'm getting updated too many times from Yammer, I'm like, okay, Yammer updates like that, put into Clutter. Yeah. So everybody click on Clutter, see what you've got in there. If you've got nothing in there, let's start teaching the artificial intelligence and the machine learning component of Office Graph how to manage your email. And it just takes a little bit of, of teaching. You just want to teach it a, a bit, and you'll, you'll find that it starts, the AI component of it starts actually engaging your inbox and sorting your email for you. Prioritizing. I think prioritizing more than sorting is probably the way that I would articulate to Trev. Yeah. All right. Then quick parts. So quick parts was another feature. It's been around for years. Um, quick parts comes from Word and Visual Studio, and it used to be about creating repeatable pieces of code or content. So. Um, has anybody on the call got multiple signature files? And just type yes in the IM window. If you've got multiple signature files that you use to inject things like quotes, 
proposals. Um, you know, if there's an email that you often repeat, okay, so I, no one else is typing in the windows. I'm going to type in the window. I'm going to say, yes, I, I have multiple signature files, okay? Thank you. Um, all right, thank you, guys. Lisa, awesome. So if you're using multiple signature files, there's actually a, a feature in Outlook that was designed to inject repeatable content. I want you guys to think about it like a macro in um, Excel. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is, and, and if everybody can do this, if and I'm going to talk you through, I'm not on the greatest connection, so I'm not going to do a lot of screen sharing and demoing today. I'm going to talk you through it. Guys, I need your participation here. Let's work through this together. Everybody create a new email. Click on new email. In the body of the message. Do you want us to all words? send it to you, Roland mm. at hub1.com? No. That'll be great. Uh, Trevor at hub no, You don't even need to put it. You don't even need to put a recipient in there. I, I just want you to go in the body of the message, and I want you to start typing something that is something you would repeat. It could be a quote. It could be a proposal. Uh, you know, in Template Manager, we're doing similar sorts of things, Trevor. But in yep. Template Manager, we're using templates to create repeatable content in a SharePoint environment. I want you guys who are using Template Manager and uh, Hub One software to think about quick parts as your personal version of this and, and it's stuff that you repeat it's not stuff that you would share with other people anyway in the body of the message type a message and I often when I demo this I often say to people you know this is content that I repeat all the time mm -hmm. type some blurb in there highlight it so once you've typed some blurb in there, I want you to highlight it. And then I want you to click on the Insert tab. So in the message door that is untitled, you've got an Insert tab. I want you to click on the Insert tab. Okay. With that message highlighted, on the right-hand side of your screen, you've got Text Box, Quick Parts, Word Art. In Quick Parts, click on the drop-down. And at the very bottom of that menu, it will say, Save Selected to Quick Part Gallery. So what that will do is save what is highlighted in your email to a Quick Part Gallery. Now, when we click this button, we've got to give this a name. It's going to be called a building block. Now, guys, the trick here is to name it something that is five characters or more without any spaces because you're doing a macro. And that means when you type that magic word in, it will then give you the option to inject the content that you've highlighted into the body of a new message. Is it, is it good to, to call it, um, you know, for example, say you had please find quote as discussed. Would yeah, you say, uh, uh, as, as attached quote, if you start typing in please, because that's yes. what you're doing all the time, yes. and you call it please, then it will come up as a, is, is it good to do that? Or is it? Um, I would call it quote. You would call it quote, okay. Yes, okay. because you're going to have the words in the quick part that say, please find quote. But how often do you type please in the email versus how often do you type quote? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And we're typing please find. It's just reminding you to do it. I suppose that's the... Um, yeah. So I like to use a word that is not commonly used in other emails. I might say, please, can we go for coffee, Trevor? Yeah. And as soon as I start typing please, it's going to give me the option to insert my quote quick part, which is not what I want. But if I, I use the word quote... You know, then when I started typing in quote, it would inject, please find attached quote and our terms and conditions, blah, 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 yeah. and all of the other stuff in there. We, we, you know, when I was at Microsoft, I, I had some of these, I had some I, a technical role, and I had to try and help people with some issues. I had one of these, which was five pages long, called, and my, my keyword was federation. I was setting up federation in Skype for Business, which is something mm -hmm. we, we can talk about another. We won't even talk about it in these sessions. But so I used to start, people are like, Roland, how do you set a federation between multiple Skype for Business or Link entities? And I would literally say, hi, Trev, thanks so much for your question, and type federation. And as soon as I got to, like, the fourth character, hit enter, and it would just yeah. inject this mountain of content for me. And our clients, especially things like, you know, please find attached your financial statements for the year ended. You can put in financial statements. Please find attached your, uh, the BAS. You can put BAS. 
or business activity statement yep. and income tax return and then you could yeah. put that as your as your context and then have that in there so that's where all right make it fast where you can start to then attach copies and, and create those those texts to come through exactly so if, if, the key, if the keyword isn't working for some reason you can go to insert quick parts and then all of your different quick parts much like your multiple signature files will be there to inject into any email so how many of us have got our first quick part working can you type in the window let's get some because I'm not sharing my screen I, I need some interaction from you guys say hey, did, did the quick parts work for you yes no maybe yes Anthony fantastic yes working happy days guys I find this to be um, a, absolute time saver for me uh, the amount of people I have to send repeatable uh, the same stuff to slight variation but I just start putting in the stuff in the beginning how to you know hi Trev and then inject my quick part yeah all right a couple of weeks ago guys we did some Skype for business and Yammer sessions and what we said on the Skype for business sessions and Yammer was when you start your machine in the morning first thing I want you to start is Skype for business and the reason why I want you to start that before you start Outlook is because when you start Outlook Outlook will then integrate with Skype for business know that it's turned on and give you the options to do things like reply with an instant message so in Outlook guys on the top left hand side you're gonna see reply reply all you see those options there next to those so we've got reply reply all and forward all right so um, next to those we've got three other little icons depending on how your setup is we've got reply with meeting so instead of me saying, hey, Trevor, could we have a meeting? And you send me an email saying, yes, Roland, we can have a meeting. I will send you a meeting request. What, what, I'm gonna, what you're going to do there is send me an email and then a meeting request. I'm asking you for a meeting. Well, why don't you just reply with the meeting? Yeah, or you go back and say, what time suits you? And you go back and forth, back and forth. Whereas if you go reply with a, a, a meeting, it gives you and tells you what times are available for yep. everybody on the suggested times on the on the right hand side so it comes up with a list of suggested times looking at the people's calendar from the original emails exactly so you know we, we, we've got that there's also a, another app which um, you can use called find time and I will send, if I send the URL da, 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 uh, I'll, I'll put the URL in the IM window in a moment but it's basically just find time at Microsoft.com which is when you need a lot of people in a meeting and you want to um, find a time that is suitable for everybody. Now, this is people inside and outside your organization. Within your organization, the scheduling assistant can see when they have free space in their calendar. But you, you can't do that unless you've got trust and things set up outside yeah. your organization. So this is a very, it, it's democratizing the meeting because we all get to vote. If you use find time, Trev, you say, all right, guys, uh, I need the eight of you in a meeting. And these are the four times that are available. Please vote. And then it will be based on the voting system. We will choose the time that is acceptable to the majority of, of, of the participants okay so reply with meeting below reply with meeting we've got reply with instant message or reply or with instant message if there are multiple people on the I on the email we can actually start a group conversation at the moment guys what's happening in the IM window down the left hand side of the screen is essentially a group chat this is a group chat session and we have added video and screen sharing so this is you know this is just a Skype for business environment that and if I wanted to turn that email into a group chat I would reply all with I am in this we, we all get too much email nobody in uh, uh, you know I ask this question all the time I was on a session yesterday uh, doing some training and I asked this question to the audience which was who does not get enough email okay please reply in the window if anybody doesn't get enough email just let us know okay if you want more email <laughs> no nobody's You're not gonna get replying. anybody responding on that nobody one, I've, I've never I've asked this question for like 10 15 years everyone's like no I get enough email so do you want to give other people more email no 
So if you said to me, Trev, hey, Rowley, can we go for a coffee at 12 o'clock? Can you send me an email? That is the kind of thing I would definitely reply with an IM. And yeah. what it will do, guys, pick any email in there and reply with IM. And what you'll see, it will inject the subject line into the instant messaging conversation. So when I say I am, I'm just abbreviating instant messaging there, but it'll inject the subject line into the instant messaging conversation for you. Now, below that is some options around. The, the, the last option we've got in that menu is more. So if you click on the more, what you'll see is forward as attachment or the call option. Now, guys, all of the people on the call are Office 365 um, subscribers, and the call option only allows you at this stage to call using voice over IP, similar to a standard Skype call that you would do in that it's just going to be a, a call like we are doing now. What we will see in the next few months is an extension of this functionality and the ability to put telephone numbers in there, all right? The telephone numbers are actually sitting as part of your credentials anyway because they're part of your contact. I call you from my phone using the same contact list, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to start injecting it in there, and we're going to be able to generate that call, not just voice over IP to voice over, so voice over Internet protocol to voice over Internet protocol or VoIP call as, as we term but out to a public switch telephone network via a, a PBX or a private branch exchange out to a mobile number. So at this point, Office 365 will be acting as your telephone services provider or your telephony provider, your ICT services, whatever term that you use in your organization for t telephony and voice. So it's not there at the moment, but as, I, as we articulated in the slide, watch out for this thing called the E5 SKU. All of our customers um, are on E3 SKUs, which is an enterprise level three, and E5 is enterprise level five, which gives you everything that you get in E3, plus the voice uh, functioning, dial-in conferencing, and some amazing Power Business Intelligence or Power BI components. So, um, Trev, I think there's a, a lot of tips and tricks for us. Uh, we have got a couple of others in here, and we're going to go through these reasonably quickly. Uh, shift plus delete permanently deletes an email. Gone forever. Okay. Um, all right. If you want something that to, to disappear, you don't want to go to deleted items. Um, email, the, the the email server doesn't really want to delete stuff because it's thinking, hey, you might want to undelete that at some stage. Maybe you did a bad mistake, but shift delete gets rid of it for good. Okay. Uh, the paperclip icon when inserting content. When you say attach file, one of the most amazing things I like about um, Outlook 2016 is any file that you've recently worked on, Trevor, when you say attach file, okay, and click on that little paperclip icon, what it'll do is files that you've recently worked on will be listed there. So normally I would work on a Word document, a PowerPoint, or something even in SharePoint, it would list those documents for me. And ideally, if it's internal, guys, I'd like you to be sending the URL, okay, uh, from SharePoint, not attaching the whole document. Why do we do that? So we have spot or single point of truth. Okay. There's a tell me feature which allows you to learn new things about Outlook or, or uh, any any of the Office um, applications, uh, as the case may be. Okay. Um, and uh, the other things we some of you may want to set up, and some Power Outlook users use this extensively already, is rules in Outlook. So in the same way we were teaching Clutter to automatic file stuff um, for us to read later, rules are a criteria and filters that we put in based on who sent it, whether I was, uh, 
whether I was in the two or the CC or the BCC folder, uh, keywords in a particular email that will automatically file it in subfolders for me. One thing about folders in Outlook, folks, let's limit the number of folders we've got. If your folders run over the page, in other words, if you have to, if you've got an inbox, you've got a bunch of subfolders, you've got to scroll down for your subfolders, <laughs> as a rule of thumb, that's too many folders. Okay, again, I would like a single pane of glass in which to view um, all of these folders. So th th those are my keys for Outlook. I've got Sway in here. We're not doing that next week. We're doing um, Office Mix next week. Is that correct, Trev? That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Ben, it's going to be this week, but we've up. decided just because we've had a few new people coming on the call, yes. let's have a little catch up on, 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 on Outlook our again and make sure and that we're doing that. Also reminded me, and I'm sure that a few other people on the call have gone, oh gosh, I forgot about that. I forgot about quick parts, I forgot about clutter, and I forgot about those things I should be using and more. Um, quick parts is a definite tool that, that's going to save you a lot of time. Uh, uh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love quick parts. And, you know, work with clutter and think about it as part of machine learning. So it is a part of the Office Graph um, functionality, and it really Helps you prioritize your email. So that's my new tip for today. But otherwise, Trevor, thank you very much for your time again. It's been awesome. I hope you have a great day. And to everybody on the call, it's been an honor talking to you. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. See you then, guys. Thank you. Cheers.